This site is a place of execution. Weird stuff tends to happen in there. So there have been 11 people hanged on the front steps as you came in the building. That is very sad and very relevant. I'm seeing I'm hearing shit. Someone touched me down here. What the hell was that? Would have been put in there and just forgotten about. Hi Crypt Keepers, thank you so much for tuning in to Amy's Crypt. Tonight we're in Nottingham to investigate the Galleries of Justice. This is quite a historic place, it dates back to the 1300s. We have courtrooms, we have dungeons, we have jail cells, we have gallows which are right behind me, and a lot of ghosts, so stay tuned. History runs deep in Nottingham, England, and the Galleries of Justice have sat at the centre of this incredible city for hundreds of years. Historically named the Shire Hall and County Jail, the building contains a former Victorian era courtroom, prison, police station, and even underground dungeons. The first documented use of this site as a courtroom dates back to 1375. Much of the prison dates to the 1400s. Executions were performed on site throughout the mid 1800s. And then there is the underground cave system, thought to extend to an even older age. The Galleries of Justice would gain a fierce reputation for itself, being the only place in the United Kingdom where one could be jailed, tried, imprisoned and executed all under the same roof. And this whole site was a place of uh, crime and punishment right through from the Middle Ages up to the 1980s. You could have been tried in the courtroom, sentenced and then imprisoned downstairs uh, in the prisons and dungeons below. This site is a place of execution as well as um, courthouse and prison. So there have been 11 people hanged on the front steps as you came in the building this evening. Those people were then buried underneath the exercise yard. So yeah, so there's been quite a lot of death and also illness and sorrow on this site for quite a many years. There's been some unusual occurrences. Other colleagues have thought that people were in rooms so didn't want to go in and disturb them and then when it got to closing time thought oh, I better go and check who's still in there and when they actually went in there was no one there at all and it hadn't been used all day. The cafe quite often have things move around so jugs of water slid across tables, cups that they've left upside down on top of the coffee machine can then be found the right way round on a different counter. Um, taps being turned on and off as well, so yeah. Many to visit the galleries of justice have claimed to have paranormal experiences within the building, ranging from sighting strange shadows in the courtroom, hearing disturbing noises in the former prison, and even reporting poltergeist activity in the cave system, once used as a dungeon. While many spirits, ranging from men, women and even children, are claimed to linger, not all are named and quite as intimidating as that of William Savile. The one known ghost that most people seem to sense is a gentleman called William Savile and he was a particularly horrible gentleman who murdered his wife and children so that he could run away with a younger lady uh, and he's been sensed or seen or smelt anywhere from in here right through to the narrow marsh area because yes he does have quite a pungent aroma so you kind of know when he's coming. There's another colleague who doesn't like walking around locking up on her own because she thinks that he follows her around she always feels like someone's right behind her on her shoulder and a very like unwelcome presence and again we've had other guests come with the voice boxes and things and Savile has come out more than once on things like that as well so I think he is quite a prominent presence here. Tonight we will investigate the galleries of justice along with my good friends Alison and Cag from Adelaide's Haunted Horizons who are kind enough to invite us along to this incredibly haunted place. Please make sure to show them some love and check out their work by following them on the links in this video's description. But now, let's dive into our investigation. Galleries of Justice, I've always wanted to visit this place and you'll see why tonight because there are so many areas of interest. We do have gallows behind me, there were people executed here, they were imprisoned here, they were also trialled and sentenced here. I've heard a lot of paranormal 
things tend to happen here as well. So I think we're in a good spot for ghost activity. We're kicking things off with one of the darkest, scariest places here as well. Are you ready for it, Jared? I am. Well, and the bells say, are going. Can I just say I'm hearing footsteps behind me too that whole time? Are you really? Oh, is that a bat up there? Yep. Oh no. That is a little bat. That is a bat. No, 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 I don't do bats. I can just hear church bells. It's really eerie. But we're gonna go down into essentially a dungeon. Are you guys ready? Hit I'm like ready. hit like on the video if you're ready. <laughs> we're going into the debtors and dark cells. Dark cells is a very appropriate name as well. Oh my god. So guys, I've already got ghost tube running with us, but I've also set up a ghost tube SLS in a different area of these underground cave systems. Area where I've set up ghost tube SLS, we also have cat balls and a round pod, and I've heard it can be quite active, so I would love if we caught a figure down there, fingers crossed. Oh, so eerie. So a lot of this old jail dates back to, say, the 1400s and that includes an area down here known as the pit. Literally, it's a pit where they free prisoners. I need to go. I need to go. Do you hear a voice? Yeah. Where do you need to go? Oh, there's a guy in there. There's a dude in there. That's literally where they free prisoners. And having the response, I need to go, is so eerie. What could that mean, you think? I mean, I'm sure you would want to get out and you would want to go away from here if you were thrown in a jail cell known as the pit, which is essentially literally a pit. Uh, do you know if these are authentic? They've got like chains and they feel authentic because they're super heavy. That is really, really heavy. So you naturally put oh. it on your head. <laughs> oh, that is really heavy, yeah. All right, let's get to work. Thank you for sharing your name with us. I was just gonna say, let's go to the dark cells. Well, Edward, if you, we're heading to the dark cells. If you wanna follow us, you can, and tell us a bit more about yourself. Edward is an extremely interesting response. Of course, it would have been a common name for the time span that this prison, court, and dungeons functioned, so it is likely it would match to a number of prisoners or staff who would have passed through this site. Furthermore, the first documented use here as a court was in 1375, which was during King Edward III's rule. I was also able to find documentation of a death here matching this name, with Edward Glynn being executed at the gallows here after murdering his ex-girlfriend in a brutal stabbing attack. Edward was hanged on the 7th of August 1906. Could this be relevant? This is so narrow. <laughs> it's very cold as well. Yeah. Good lord. Oh, there's another mannequin here too. Oh, he doesn't look very happy, does he? You were literally just standing on the oubliette. This is the oubliette. Yeah. Do you know what that is? I do actually, from Lep Castle. So oubliette is a French word meaning like to forget. Literally a dungeon-like hole in the ground where prisoners were thrown. And they would throw the ones that, you know, there's no redemption for these people. There's no turning back. You're thrown down into this hole to die, to rot and die. And look at it. Didn't some of them have like spikes in it at the bottom as well? Yep, to impale people. Oh, that's really bad, isn't it? So bad, it's nasty. Now get in this little Willy Wonka door. Actually, so are these doors smaller because people were smaller back then or what? I think so, but also, I mean, this is a dungeon. They put people here they didn't really give care in the world for, so maybe they just were like, eh, we don't need to make the door full size. Yeah, okay, let me go in then. Wow, yeah. Oh, yep. All right, so we're completely in the dark now. How does it feel in there? I mean, yeah, it's very dark. It's definitely colder than the rest of the building. Surprisingly, I feel like we've been in worse cells though. Like it's quite spacious, I think. Yeah, but how many people were crammed in here? Oh yeah, that's a good point, I don't know. Speaking of, I also heard uh, earlier on, our guide was telling us that um, in either the oubliette or in parts of- Suffocate. Oh my God. That just said suffocate. Yep. I was gonna say there were parts where they'd throw people and there'd be no room to lay down or sit down. Like you just had to stand there. You were crammed in yeah. there. Literally to suffocate. 
Is, is that what happened to you here? I'm so sorry. Do you feel like you're suffocating in here? That's so weird that that come up. My name's Amy and this is Jared. Can you give us another sign that you're around, whether your name is Edward or you're someone else? Can you come sit down on this bed here next to me? We're here to talk to you. Common name, yes. But I do feel like Edward's sort of a nice time period name as well, right? For this place. Who was in Angel. 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 What does that mean? Are you, are you religious or are you talking about one of us? Angel. So a lot of people would have died here, right? Or just below us in the oubliette, anyway. Anyone put in the oubliette would end up dying down there, yeah. Damn. We're right on top of that right now. Scared. I'm not scared of you. I hope that you're not scared of us. Should we be scared? Ghost tube slowed down, so I'm gonna put it on the oubliette. Make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks. Oh my God, imagine that. Oh, I actually cannot see. Oh, is that safe? Yeah, just don't kick it. We take risks here on Amy's Crypt. <laughs> we live on the edge of the oubliette. If my phone falls through, we'll never see it again. Can you give us a word again? Can you move one of these for us? Can you make a noise? Kind of cool, we got the word scared and suffocate, suffocate in that cell. Um, I think it's pretty cool that we got a name as well, Edward. It seems fitting. This place saw more than its fair share of Edwards. <laughs> what? What is that? Was that behind you? Was that from in the cell or? I don't know. I thought it was behind me on this wall. I don't know if it, I don't think it was in the cell. Possible outside noise, maybe? I don't Is there know anything that can there. make a noise in here? Weird. What is that? What is that? While we had managed to collect some very relevant responses and strange noises in the dark cells, we decided to head further down into the cave system to perhaps the darkest place within the building. This was also where we had left our ghost tube SLS camera rolling, and what we didn't know at this time was that this camera picked up on a number of strange noises, which to me are even more compelling than what we had already heard. This is because this part of the cave is deep beneath ground and extremely sheltered, so take a listen and let me know what you can hear. I'm gonna name this guy Edward. See you, Edward, we might come back later. Oh, poor little Edward. All right, so we've done the pit, we've done the dark cells. Let's head towards the really, really freaking creepy area where we left the SLS. This place is like a little maze. It's like a rabbit. Is it a warren? Is that what they're called? It's like a little underground cave system, tunnel system. It's crazy. And I have to follow Jared or I'll totally get lost. <laughs> Down we go. So guys, quite literally, this place has a cave system underneath it that was used as a dungeon. Like we're now entering, was it sandstone? It was carved into sandstone, yeah. yeah. So we're now entering real sandstone caves. So the cave area, mainly the oubliette, 
was a forgetting place. Prisoners that were never going to be released would have been put in there and just forgotten about. And there's one particular cave part that's not quite big enough for you to stand up straight in, but also not wide enough for you to lay down comfortably either. You would just be left there in a very awkward, uncomfortable position. I did do an overnighter here. We did play a game where we threw stones in that area against a particular wall, and some of those did get returned back to us, so yeah. Oh, check this out, Ames. A place to be forgotten. So this is where, they, again, like the oubliette, I'd leave you to just die and rot. And that's where we've had our SLS camera. So I'm curious if it's picked anything up. I don't really like that room. They do say there's something darker in there, like a dark presence, rocks get thrown, weird stuff tends to happen in there. I'm sure like some of the criminals that came through here were innocent, but I'm also sure a lot of them were not nice people as well, you know what I mean? So. It would make sense that there'd be some dark Does entities down here. Does anyone deserve it? Well, yeah, it's a pretty horrible way to die, isn't it? Okay, I wonder if our camera picked anything up. And I had it pointed down here. Facing this dude. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Hunger. <gasps> that is very sad and very relevant. Are you hungry? He looks hungry. I mean, I mean, obviously this is a mannequin, guys. This isn't a real rotting corpse, but yeah, you would have been left in here. Yeah, you would have gone hungry. You would have been malnourished. You would have died of starvation down here, quite literally. I'm so, so sorry. We should have brought some food down. And if there are people down here who are a bit like nasty in the afterlife, like I don't want to go and say, hey, it's a demon. But if, you know, someone is down here doing things that are on the darker side, could it just be that it's someone who was hungry and a bit agitated, you know? Like, how much of that transfers over into the world of the spirits? I'm just gonna put ghost food down in this area where we had that response. You know what? We did bring food tonight. Coffin. I don't know what they would have done with the bodies. We were told a very gruesome story earlier about potentially how they might have cleared them out down here. We've heard stories, so this I'm not entirely sure is true, that every so often they would have opened the door to that cave area and let in packs of hungry dogs uh, to clear up uh, anything that was there. So yeah, pretty grim, that part. So as Amy said, she doesn't know the truth behind that story, but it's kind of gruesome to think of. Maybe they weren't given her the right burial. They want a coffin, you know what I'm saying? Now, if there's someone down here, I do have some food I can fetch for you and I can leave for you. If you can light up one of these balls or go towards that red light, I will bring you some food. In this moment, we decided to cut our ghost tube SLS camera, sit down and quickly scrub through the footage to see whether we had captured anything of obvious interest. During this time, we received more responses through the ghost tube app and heard some strange noises with our own ears. Lord. 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 That could be religious. That could also be like Lord of the land kind of thing. Um, we How? How? I'm not sure. Are you noble? Did you hear a gate open or something? Yeah. Yeah, I just heard like a gate in the distance move or something. So there's all prison cells we haven't been to yet, guys. Um, it could have even been doors in the, uh, the dark cells we just were, but it just came from down there. That's the only way in and out of this cave system. So it definitely came from that way, but what it was, I don't know. With so much happening in this dungeon, we decided we should pause our walkthrough, despite still having a jail cell block, courtroom and graves to explore. It felt right to spend a bit more time in this cave and see what we could uncover through a ghost tube box session. Looking back, I am glad that we stuck around for what was about to happen is an experience that I won't soon forget. Now we've gone completely lights off down here. It feels very creepy and it really more sets the mood that if you were left alone down here to die, you died down here in complete darkness. You would have, yeah, starved to death and been very lonely and scared down here. Yeah, like that guy. I doubt they would have had like 
torches and stuff down here either because what's the point you know what I mean now if there is anyone who remains down here and you're still down here with us we are here to communicate we want you to ugh. I just felt something brush I have a little you can film I don't care Jared I've got a little bit of skin hanging out back here yeah and I just felt something very lightly brush me here on my actual skin I'm gonna cover the skin <laughs> If you are gonna touch me though, f touch me, like push me, hit me, do something so I know that it's not just like a hair hanging on my skin. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Would the spirit understand that? Oh my god. Okay, let's roll box. That's freaky. You heard like something moving here, right? Two footsteps. Can you make a loud noise in here like this? It is very scary to sit alone in a dungeon from 13, 1400s and hear movement and banging when you are alone down here. Oh, hello, thank you so much for Talking to us, my name's Amy, this is Jared. And I just wanna say, if there is someone down here, we really wanna hear your voice. And this is maybe your moment to communicate with the world. If you can come close to these lights in my hands, maybe you can use this device uh, to talk to us. That was that noise again, that door. Those voices aren't coming from Vox, that's coming from in here. I've just muted Vox, that's why my finger's on it. And that door. And that door. Oh, that scared me. Sorry. I feel like I heard a little kid then. They do say children down here, that's a thing. Children were held here, imprisoned here, and probably a lot of the times with their mothers as well. Did somebody touch me on the back before? I'm sorry if you're hungry. If you're hungry, can you tell me what you want to eat? I can bring you some food. Bring some. How many people are down here? <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that noise is. There's a definite noise I keep hearing out here. Camera doesn't have enough infrared light to see that. We need a name. Is that something you can provide us? What happened to you down here in this room? Can you give us a sign, anything? Make a loud noise, touch one of us, push one of us, tell us very clearly your name, or maybe even say hello. Still waiting. I heard strange and then like you're waiting. We are waiting for you. We're very patient. We'd just love for you to talk to us. Yes. Oh, ball. <sighs> okay, thank you for lighting the ball up. Uh, there's a couple of other balls there that you can go towards as well. And then if you walk right up to the red light, that'll really scare us. That was a child. Oh, I've got goosebumps now. Is there a, a, a child here? Is there a little kid? Oh, I can 
I chose again. Wait here. We're very patient. We, we will wait here with you. I'm sorry that you were put here to wait for your end. You got two. Got two. Hello? Hey, hello Hi, again. hello. Maybe there's two of you down here. There's two of us. We would love to know who, who you are. What's your story? I feel like I heard something that wasn't even English then. I don't know like what if there was other languages possibly spoken here. Leave me a comment if you know. English hasn't always been, you know, spoken in England. Uh, how long have you been down here for? Do you know? We continued this session for some time and upon deciding to wrap things up and move on, we received one final response through GhostTube Vox, which could be considered quite relevant. Directly after this, Jared and I got into a little argument over the silliest thing, whose stomach growled. This in itself is pretty weird as we were both adamant that this was not our own stomach's noise, and we're usually pretty good at owning up to this. I'm not saying that this was paranormal, yet I decided to keep this moment in the video, as during the argument I was distracted after sighting a shadow figure, and wanted to share my reaction of this with you all. Ready? Mm -hmm. Cut. Yeah. Cut. Thieves. Thieves. Thieves? Is that just as you cut as well? I just cut and I swear it said thieves. Are you talking to us, or is that who's down here? <laughs> I think stomach. you're hungry. That was you! That was you! That's not my stomach. That wasn't my stomach. That's not my stomach. I was like, oh, Jared. <laughs> that wasn't me. That is not my stomach. when it's you, it wasn't me. It's not me. I can hear it coming from you as well. I don't even know if we're going to include that because could that be paranormal? But I swear, what, 100%, getting, that is not my f***ing stomach. What, we're getting disembodied stomach growls now. It said Kirk. hungry or what did it say? It said hungry or hunger. Hunger? It must have been one of us, but I don't know. I just, I, I feel like it was me. I didn't feel anything <gasps> down there. Uh, film the door, film the door. What? I know s*** and this could just be because we're in the dark, but... There must be an exit light just out of the door, so I can see green light just spilling into the room. I swear I just seen a little head come around and like peek around the corner for a split second, like just breaking that light. In fact, let's just look. Well, obviously, like there's no one there. It just looked like. And I don't know how the shadow will will work. Oh, this must be the green light, okay? It just looked like a head popped in for a split second and then popped out. But can you see this little green light here? Yeah. So there's a little green light here and I could just see that illuminating here. And it just was like a shadow like that. And like, as I sort of noticed it, it left and went back in. That's so weird. Unable to see anything out of the ordinary in this area, we turned back to enter the cave and as Jared was collecting some footage in the corner, I heard with my own ears something that sounded just like a child's voice. This is not something Jared heard in the moment, but was documented on the audio we had rolling. Can I just get a little close up of this guy? Yeah. You heard that? What? There was a voice. I didn't hear that one. It sounded like, hmm. Again, out here. You heard that? I'm seeing I'm not hearing shit. Someone touched me down here. Oh, I'm disturbed. <laughs> 
Crib Keepers, we've just moved our operation a little bit higher up in the building. There is an old jail cell block behind me. This apparently is a very active area. You've got footsteps of people walking down. You've got things like cries, wails, male voices, doors opening, closing, rattling of chains, keys, all that kind of stuff. Staff members have been downstairs in historical costume. They've had shawls pulled off them, hair pulled, that kind of thing. When we go downstairs into the night cell, quite often, again, you feel like there's somebody in there with you to the point where, again, a colleague has felt like someone's holding their arm. We are actually here tonight with my friends Adelaide's Haunted Horizons, and I'm gonna say, go check out their Facebook page. They do a lot of uh, live stream paranormal investigations, and we investigated with them right here. We were hearing noises around us and had some really weird things come through some of the methods that we were using. So I'm gonna leave links to their stuff below. Uh, but definitely check it out. I did an Estes method with them, so if you want to see see that, go check it out. It was so good as well. <laughs> it was so creepy. I'm going to walk down the cell block though and show you guys. We already have Ghost Tube SLS set up and rolling, monitoring the space because we're not going to spend our whole time here. There's actually a whole other area that's very, very haunted that we want to take you to as well. I just got a magnetic spike here. Being mindful of the doors, but I'm not near the doors. So that's a bit weird. That was a cool one. If there's somebody around, I'd love to know your name. How do the cells feel? <coughs> there's such a bit of a smell in here. Like chalky. Chalky? Yeah. So on the live stream we did with my friends earlier, people were singing, actually I can smell chalk now too. Yeah, it's like a chalk smell. We were getting comments from the live stream, people were seeing something at the very end of this corridor and also something sort of coming out of this room here. And I figured that was a good reason to set SLS up. I'm getting like, yeah, like smells like chalky, um, it's actually kind of irritating when I know it's Yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> yeah, me too. We just, we just spent like, I don't know, an hour down here investigating with Haunted Horizons. I haven't felt like this this whole time till just now. Yeah, I'm really like... <clears throat> Real. Real? Real. You're just like, I'm really like... <clears throat> yeah, the smell is real, that's for sure. Yeah. Is there anyone around? Can you move a door or give us a sign that you're here? We were hearing like, with the Adelaide Sons Horizons, we were hearing like squeaks and movement like down this far end of this corridor. Alison also got touched on the hair while she was doing the, um, while you were doing the Estes, so. Oh, that's it's weird. Weird. <laughs> got a birching stool. I was like flogging. Yeah. So people would, I'm not going to lay on this guys because this might be like antique, well I'm sure it is. But people would lay on this right hand. Yeah, and then they'd get, get flogged. Good. So it's pretty grim. What torture device is this? That's a family activity. Try me. <laughs> <laughs> I sentenced you to 100 years of family friendly activities. <laughs> The crank was the favourite form of hard labour practised in this jail. They would have to turn the handle 10,000 times for 8 hours a day. Wow. Alright, if there's anyone down there and you want to come out to play, now's your time. We're going to leave you in peace, so... Ooh, I've got a cold breeze right here. I just got a cold feeling just here. Me in too. This, area. this is... Freezing right here. Yeah. What's curious as well, this is going into the women's cells and the laundry area, which I've heard is very, very active. So we're going to take you in for a quick look. The jail area, uh, particularly the ladies' laundry area in the bedroom, is quite active for uh, customers say that they've felt presences in there or that, uh, again, they've sort of been pushed or pulled in that area. People have heard giggling, so I think there's quite a lot of activity from children 
around that area. So sort of the mischievous energy rather than uh, scary. So yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice. <laughs> Is there a person in there behind you? No, oh, it's clothing. clothing. Okay. <laughs> scared me then. No, it scared me too. All right, this is the laundry. Is there anyone around that wants to communicate? Can you walk up to me? I've heard that there's children down here even. So what are some of the ghost stories that people have claimed to have happened in this area? Because the laundry seems like a pretty... I wouldn't haunt a laundry if I was a ghost, you know what I mean? I think it's more things like children, so a bit mischievous, a bit more sort of playful, but people have symbols of light and um, heard things down here. So I've heard that it is active and Amy, who we interviewed earlier, said this was her least favourite area of the prison. She doesn't like it in here. <laughs> so maybe that counts for something. Um, Ames. What? I think they've got fake poo in this chamber pot. Well, Is that yeah. really necessary? <laughs> Can you confirm it's fake poo? They give you the full experience here. Is it really fake? Touch it, that's okay. Yeah, it's definitely fake, it's like foam. <laughs> Why am I touching this poo? <laughs> It's a big poo too. <laughs> Stop with the poo. Guys, we're heading upwards to one of my favorite areas. I think this place is so, so cool. I love it. So are these like cells too? Cause there's all like bars and stuff. I guess it's a prison. But check this out, Jared. Oh. Is that a real, real one? For those of you that don't know, this is a gibbet. You would be put in here and hung up alive. And this is also where you died. So you would just be stuck in this suit, stuck standing up for days, weeks, however long it took. People are left to rot in those as well. So they'd just be like, rot. The heck? <laughs> That's not Alison and Keg. That's not them, no. So right now, Alison and Keg are in the lower depths of the There's building. There's no way we were near them. This sound came from up here, which is going up to where we're going. They heard voices, up, voices there earlier as well. They did. Alright, let's go find that. Move away from the gross gibbet. Rock. Rock. This piece of audio to me is extremely weird. Personally, I can hear two voices here. One sounds to me like a voice almost singing out, while a quieter woman's voice appears to say, leave them, beneath the first voice. We were investigating this night with Alison and Cag of Adelaide's Haunted Horizons, but do not believe these voices to be theirs as they had been investigating a different area. We also checked with our guide, Amy, who was present this night in one of the staff areas to see that it wasn't her. Furthermore, we followed the noise to where we heard it originate from, in the courtroom, which is allegedly one of the more active locations of the Galleries of Justice, yet we couldn't establish a source for the voices. This doesn't mean that they were paranormal, yet they were something we could not explain in this moment. Hello? No one here? There's no one in here. This is literally where we would have heard the voices coming from, right? Yep. It wouldn't have been Cag and Ellison because they're in the bowels of the building, like it underground. It doesn't sound like them. Up here, guys. Voices knocking, very common. Also, sighting shadows or actual people standing up here is very, very common. Uh, right here in the courtroom, uh, there has been sort of the sound of pacing around the uh, the jury box area over on this side here uh, and quite often we get a banging in one corner. Many staff and visitors have taken photos of the public gallery up above uh, where they've seen anything from orbs right through to children's faces looking back at them. This room reminds me of like the um, like parliament, you know like the guys that wear the white wigs and stuff yelling at each other. 
It also reminds me of I investigated a place in Tasmania, the Hobart Convict Penitentiary with my mum. Shout out to mum, I know you're watching. <laughs> but this gives me vibes of the Hobart Convict Penitentiary, like the jails down there and then the courtroom up here. But this is why it might be the only place in England where you could be um, sort of like arrested, tried, sentenced, imprisoned, and then also executed here like they did it all in one spot. Well, yeah, so you would get tried here and when you were sentenced, down those stairs is where we just were for the, uh, for the prison the and, the, and the jail yeah. and the dungeon. So yeah, you would go down there and that's it. That's it. And then a lot of the time, yeah, you were thrown in that hole to die or you were hanged. So it all happened here. Pretty convenient, I guess, in a way. Since we had heard voices which we believed to originate from the haunted courtroom, and since Ghost Tube had been very quiet, we decided to try a different style of reaching out and set up to perform an Estes method, with Jared sitting in the judge's chair asking questions, and myself standing in one of the stands wearing noise cancelling headphones and a blindfold, while listening to a spirit box and relaying anything that I heard come through. Alright, I'm judge, juror and... not executioner, sentencer. We are now here today adjourned in court. How do you plead? We are gathered here in court and you're accused of crimes against the people. How do you plead? Heard. Good that you heard me. How do you plead? Came here in secret. Who brought you here? Someone. Cat was going off. Right in front of Amy. Just one person? Bar husband. Your husband. So are you a female then? What is your crime? Scared her. Did you hurt somebody or attack them? How many years are you being sentenced? Seven. Seven, seven years. That's relevant, that's a relevant response. Fate. Did you England. Catboy's going off again. Did you serve the seven years or did you die here? Were you released? Can you light up that cat ball if you finished your, your sentence or if you... Can you light it up if you died here? Can you touch the uh, red device on the table here? Might be able to let us know that you're here. Usually. What is it that you did for a living usually during the day? Accept. What did you accept? What was your occupation? Father. Were you a father? I'm just hearing noises at the back of the courtroom. Hey, let me just shine this light out there. Can you show yourself? Do not. What don't you want me to do? People are His. Sick. Pierce. People have said to see figures up here, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Who's welcoming me? Can you make a noise somewhere in this room to let us know that you're here? Get rid of him. You don't want me here. Killed. Kill or killed? There's a noise over there. He isn't. Who's making that noise over there? Can you tell me? There's a noise over there. There's a noise over there. Can you make that noise again? I... Just say it. Can you tell me who brought you here? 
brother. Your brother? Wow, that is spot on. We're getting spot on words on this session, guys. I feel like some sort of a domestic dispute. He's teaching you. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about you and your alleged crime. Did you commit the crime? Evidence. There was obviously enough evidence to convict you. What the hell was that? That was right behind me. That was right here. What was that? I'm, really I'm feeling all tingles on my, my left leg, Jared. I was just, just saying, I was feeling cold. I've got, I've got all goosebumps you know. too. Okay, we're both getting goosebumps and tingles over our bodies. And the bells. Bells, I don't hear any bells. Knob. Knob, that's so weird. So I heard a crack right here and we both got chills at the same time. Convict you? What the hell was that? Convict you? What the hell was that? Can you, you never told me what your crime was. Bully. Bully. Paid. Paid. Were you friends? Black. Black. What evidence did they have against you? Message. A message, a letter. Was it a letter? Hearing noises, guys. Hang on, I just need a minute. What's wrong? I'm just getting a bit dizzy. It might just be because I'm standing here. I was hearing a noise from the back of the room behind you just as you pulled them off. Really? Like yeah. what? Just movement. Yeah, I feel a bit yucky and like dizzy. Like, and I was almost like, I need to just see where I am because I might fall over. <laughs> All right, guys, we've just moved out into the courtyard. And the reason we're doing this is there's just another area of interest I really wanted to highlight in this video and show you guys. And that is this courtyard area. Now there are- b Bribed. Bribed. Maybe that's so how someone ended up in here. People were executed out here. People were buried here. There is very likely dead bodies right under my feet here. Well, actually there's graves along this wall, isn't there? There are tombstones on the wall, yeah. Yeah, these are like legit gravestones here. So just some of the people buried here and there's the gallows, which is where we started at the beginning of the night. Yeah. So we started down there by the gallows. Now this area is super common for people sighting figures. It's been a dark figure sighted on this staircase here by a lot of people a lot of times. But there's also an area where most of the bodies are buried and things are seen in there. So we're going to have ghost tube rolling, walk through that area. Do you hear that? What the heck was that? Uh, uh, that is so weird. Yeah, and they say this is a pretty active area, so I mean, someone out here, you can follow us. We're going in this room here, and I know that you like to hang out there. <laughs> What the fuck? I just heard someone yell. I mean, we are outside at this point. Do you think that noise could be coming from outside or? I have no idea. That genuinely, like, my heart sank when I heard that dude's voice, though. So. What the heck? Shot. I heard like a door open then or something. Yeah, that was a door. What the fuck? What the heck? What the heck? Alright, let's try this again. No yelling that time. <laughs> Is this a... Again, with the poop. Is this a privy? I think it is. It's a dummy. 
Ew, there's a torso in there. What? I do think this area is kind of weird. This is um, our guide tonight, Amy. <laughs> Told us a really weird story about something that happened to her in here. I think the oddest one for me was um, a nice summer evening down in the exercise yard and we went into a room that we use as a mock-up of a Victorian street now but that is actually directly above where many of the bodies were buried uh, and we turned all the lights off because I was doing a show round for another paranormal group and the lady I was with just turned to me and asked me if I was okay at which I replied I'm fine but it does just feel like someone swinging my skirt back and forth so yeah <laughs> Hi, my name's Amy, this is Jared. I'm calling out to the shadow people. Why does it smell so weird in here? I don't know. What are you smelling? I'm smelling just like rope. It's like it's very old, like how to explain. Like I mean, it's rotting wood or something. Can I ring this? Wake up, ghosts. That was louder than I expected. <laughs> that was the spirit that pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> My ears hurt now. So this area is set up like a fake little um, Victorian street for, you know, schools that come through here, like educational purposes. But they believe it's quite haunted because of, you know, the ground it's built up on, the bodies under there, so. If there's anyone around, can you come towards the lights in my hand and give us a sign that while you're here and you want to talk? After exploring this area for some time and receiving no further responses through GhostTube, we decided to go lights out and spend some quiet time recording an EVP session. My name is Amy and this is Jared and we would love to hear your voice if you could come up very close to the lights in our hands and say something loud, we would love that. Can you perhaps tell us how many people are here with us right now? Who is buried here? What was your crime? Is William around? Give us a sign. Can you tell us where you're from? Alright Crew Keepers, I'm so stoked that we got to investigate here. This is a really, really interesting place with a lot of layers of history and different areas, different sections and I actually think that we had some really cool evidence, some really cool moments. So I do want to say thank you to my friends at Adelaide's Haunted Horizons. They actually invited us to join them here so oh my god I love them so much. Their links are all below so definitely go follow them. They do a lot of live stream paranormal investigations on Facebook but they also upload to YouTube as well so I'm not sure if my episode will come first, theirs will come first but you might actually be able to see what they captured here tonight for themselves on YouTube so definitely subscribe to them. They're the loveliest people in the whole world. <laughs> um, but I do just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. That really, really helps me out. If you want to do any more reading on this place, head to my website, amyscrypt.com. You can also follow me on social media at amyscrypt, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And there was a big loud noise behind me. I mean, in front of me, behind Jared. Um, and bonus. Uh, videos, Patreon, YouTube, links are below. But thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Until next time.